This playlist deals with some aspects of Eurocode 2 version 2023 and watch this playlist for uh, further selected topics. The video is about clause 8, the ultimate limit state, and it is video 2 regarding punching shear. In video 2, we will consider the case where the uh, shear, applied shear stress is smaller than the uh, shear stress capacity of the concrete alone. The design value of the applied shear stress or design shear stress is equal to a coefficient beta the uh, shear force divided by the uh, control parameter and divided by the shear resistance effective depth. VD design shear force at the control parameter. Now, all favorable loads acting on the tensile side of the planner member inside that control parameter may be deducted from the shear force. Because this control parameter B0.5, the surface that it uh, creates is not that big. So the gain that you have by subtracting it is not that large. In version of Eurocode 2 2004, we had a control parameter at two times D. So the, the influence was much larger. The design shear stress and beta is the coefficient accounting for concentrations of the shear force. The beta value is for internal columns 1.15, for edge columns 1.4, and for corner columns 1.5. What is new is that there is also a beta coefficient for the ends of walls and for the corners of walls. It's 1.4 and 1.2. But the values of 1.15 up till 1.5 are approximated values, and you can only use it when the lateral stability of the slab does not depend on the frame action of slabs and columns. And the adjacent spans do not differ in length more than 25%. And the slab is only under uniformly distributed loads. Then concerning edge and corner columns, the uh, moment transfer must be, uh, uh, must be smaller than this value here mentioned in this formula. This condition, there is a little drawing for that. Huh? It's only for a uh, edge column. So what about corner columns? What is then the value? What about uh, yeah, what about corner column? Because this is applicable for edge and corner. So it's not very clear how this formula must be in. Uh, the interpretation of this formula is not clear for corner columns. When, when you do not fulfill the requirements uh, as was stated on the previous slide, then you have to use a refined method to calculate the beta. And we should take care because when doing so, you need to calculate eccentricities of the force VED. And this eccentricity of the forces is with respect to the center width of the control parameter. So not with the center width of the support. So eccentricities are measured with the uh, uh, in respect to the center width of the control parameter. It makes it um, rather difficult to calculate. Figure 8.21, three is the edge of the slab. The dotted area four is the support area. And then you got VED, which is the uh, shear force 
uh, of the acting shear force or the design value of the shear force, you know, it's the acting shear force. It's then there with a certain eccentricity, EBY and EBX. But you will see that the eccentricity is with respect to point two, and point two is the center width of the control perimeter. The figure 8.21 is only there for a patch column. So all about the figures for internal and corner columns. It should be nice to complete this series of 8.21 figures. The coefficient beta E is then the maximum of 1.05 and 1 plus plus 1.1, and then is the eccentricity EB divided by the width BB. The width BB is the square root of BB min and BB max. So BB min and BB max are indicated here on the drawing, but again, only for the uh, edge column. So what about the other columns? What about the internal and the corner columns? The eccentricity, now we've got BB is defined. Now EB is the uh, eccentricity, the total eccentricity, and it's for internal columns. It is the square root of the sum of those two. So this is defined here. For edge columns, it's 0.5, the eccentricity in X direction plus the eccentricity in Y direction. And for corner columns, it's 0.27 times the sum of the two eccentricities. Now, this looks at first sight strange. Isn't that a typo? Why is it 0.5 the direction in x direction plus one times the, the eccentricity in y direction for the edge column? Most likely it has to do with the fact that in the x direction, you do not have the full slab to to support you because on the left hand side here on the drawing there is no there's no slab while on the y direction you have a continuous slab in this direction maybe that's the case but i'm not 100 percent sure this formula i checked with the background documents so i'm pretty sure it's not a typo it's not an error for concentrated columns when you have the control perimeter here and you have concentrated uh, uh, loads at a, a distance smaller than three times dv. And then when the, the code talks about significant concentrated loads, so you can uh, uh, have an, uh, an, an, uh, a smaller uh, shear stress, uh, a design value of the shear stress uh, when you have concentrated loads within a zone 3 dV of the control perimeter. But significant means that the load must be bigger than 0.2 times the uh, um, shear force VED at the support. So from that point on, now a uh, significant concentrated load is then significant is defined. When this is happening, uh, when, when there is a, a value P, P2 within the control perimeter or a significant concentrated load outside the control perimeter at a distance smaller than 3 dV, then you, you can calculate the shear uh, stress, the applied shear stress or the design value of the shear stress as VED, small, uh, small V, uh, VED divided by DV. VED is the shear force per unit width. So that's why there is no V in this. It's a shear force per unit width. And this shear force per unit width, you can have a mean value around the peak, left and right, smaller than a distance to DV. So that's nice to have. Now we know at what distance we can take the mean value of the uh, shear force per unit width. So 
the RDC, which is the design value of the resistance of the concrete in, in shear stress, expressed in shear stress, is equal to this formula and must be bigger than this value stated here. First thing that we notice is that there is no minimum value for tau, tau RDC. It's not stated in formula 8.94. The factor KPB is equal to formula 8.96. And you will notice that the uh, factor KPB is a function of the shape of the support. So this is rather uh, a little bit complicated when you have to make a design. For, for checking a design, okay, then B0 and B0.5 is known, but if you have to design it, then this is not known. The rho L, it's the reinforcement ratio of the longitudinal reinforcement, is of course the square root of the, of the reinforcement ratio in X and Y direction. But in this formula, there is no limitation on rho L. In Eurocode 2, 2004, there was a clear limitation of 2%. Now this limitation is not there. Maybe it's uh, something they forgot. Maybe it's not just not there. The longitudinal reinforcement must be anchored uh, sufficiently, of course. And then it must be anchored over a zone 3 dv from the support. And this zone is called, the width of the zone is called BS. This is for the internal column. You have also BS for the edge column and for the corner column with their definitions of 45 degrees. So that makes BS, uh, that's, that's the definition of BS. Rho LX and Rho LA, the, it's the mean value of the reinforcement ratio over the width BS. And Rho L, the reinforcement ratio, is the only defined in, in formula 8.28 and is defined as the reinforcement ASL divided by BWD. So we suppose, because this formula is, we suppose that for slabs, BW is 1,000 when you, when you uh, have the units square millimeters and millimeters, it's 1,000 millimeters per unit width. And D, I suppose, it is meant DVX when you calculate the reinforcement ratio in X direction. To be clear, this formula is not in the code, only this formula is. So we have to make an interpretation. Now, what follows is the comparison of VRDC, which is the shear force capacity or the design value of the shear force capacity of the concrete alone, according to Eurocode 2 version 2004 and Eurocode 2 version 2023. We will do that for a certain amount of parameters. The width of the section, of course, is 1,000 millimeters. And we'll take a diameter of longitudinal reinforcement equal in X and Y direction of 12 millimeters. We, uh, as smallest value of the upper size, we will take the lower equals to 32 millimeters, a concrete cover of 30 millimeters, and the steel quality of 500 megapascal. And from tension reinforcement, the longitudinal reinforcement in X and Y direction, we will take it the same in X and Y, and we will take it as the optimum reinforcement for the bending moment, which means that the uh, uh, strains are, are maximum for concrete and, and 10 per mil for the uh, uh, steel. Then the effective depth is H minus 42 millimeters. The depth of the slab, we will take uh, 
uh, uh, range of 200 up to 500 millimeters. And a concrete quality, we will go from 12 megapascal to 19 megapascal. The shear force capacity of the concrete alone, according to the version 2023, is of course equal to the shear stress multiplied by the uh, uh, control parameter times dv and divided, of course, by the beta e and, time, and divided by 1000. Everything is in Newton per square millimeter and in millimeter, expressed in millimeter. The VRDC is expressed in kilonewton because this is a force. And because it's kilonewton, that's why we divide by 1000. And B05 is a critical parameter at dV over 2. Then we can have a similar, a similar formula for uh, the version of Eurocode 2 in 2004. But now we have a big difference. Mu1 is the critical parameter at 2 dV, not at dV over 2. So a direct comparison of the shear stress with the shear force, it's not, it's not logic. You cannot do that because of it's, a, it's taken on a different control parameter. So obviously, the shear uh, stress in version 2023 must be much higher than the one in 2004. And taking a graph, it, for, for the input that was mentioned on the previous slides. And you see on the y-axis, the uh, shear stress uh, resistance of the concrete alone. And on the x-axis, the different uh, slab depths, then you will see in red, it's for the version 2004, and in blue, the version of 2023. You cannot conclude from this that the allowable shear stress, punching shear stress in concrete for, uh, is uh, two and a half times more than it was in 2004. You cannot conclude that because this is a, a very strange comparison because of that critical parameter. So that's why we will not compare the shear stress as such but the shear force that can be taken by the concrete. Now we will have a look at uh, shear uh, uh, force capacity concrete alone of a slab without reinforcement. On the x-axis, we have the different depths of uh, the slab. On the y-axis, it's the capacity of the concrete, the shear uh, stress of the shear force capacity of the concrete uh, with Eurocode 2 version 2023 divided by the version of Eurocode 2004. And this we have, we have uh, calculated with uh, different concrete qualities. The first thing that we notice is that <clears throat> the relationship between this and the depth that it is a little bit strange. You have FCK50, which is the green one, and then it goes to the purple one, FCK55. Then it goes up again with FCK60. It goes up again as FCK70. And then for high, uh, for uh, 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 compressive strength of 90 megapascal, it comes down again to the dark blue one. So it means that for high quality concrete uh, uh, from a certain uh, value of, of the compressive strength, you, you, this line is lowered. You have less capacity. The dotted line means that uh, it's equal. And then from this dotted line on, you have a decrease. And from the other one, you have an increase in uh, capacity of ERDC. We can see now on the left uh, end for small depth 
uh, uh, flaps, we have an increase in the uh, shear uh, force capacity. And the shear increase uh, is from 15 to almost 30%. But on the other hand, for uh, slabs with uh, large depth, we have a decrease in, in, in capacity, and the decrease is between 5 and 15%. Now let's take a look at the different graphs. This is for a slab with depth 200 millimeters, and this is the uh, uh, shear force capacity of the slab in function of the concrete quality, not in function of the depth, but in function of the concrete quality. The red one is according 2004 version, and the blue one according to the 2023 version. And you will see for H equals to two, on the millimeter, you have an increase in concrete in punching of in punching shear for capacity of concrete alone. For a slab with 400 millimeters, it's almost equal. And for a slab with 500 millimeters, you have clearly a decrease because the blue line is lower than the red one. You have clearly a decrease in concrete capacity. For the longitudinal reinforcement for high strength concrete, for the uh, FCK is bigger than 50 megapascal, the longitudinal reinforcement is different from the code for the code in 2023 than from the present code in 2004, because we took the optimum reinforcement, which is different in the different code. We can now have another look at the, at the graph. By on the x-axis axis is the concrete quality. On the y-axis is the ratio of the shear force capacity. And this according, um, we have made different lines for different uh, concrete depths. And you see clearly that for a depth of 400, 450, and 500, we have a decrease of ERDC. And for the others, we have an increase. This is a very odd shape. And with the peak on 70 megapascal as concrete quality, it has to do with the definition of DDG. This definition is different starting from uh, uh, 60 megapascal. This graph is made only for uh, certain points. So, it's a linear interpolation. Uh, it's only made for the uh, uh, accepted or existing concrete qualities. We can now have a look. What is now the influence of taking a different longitudinal reinforcement? Because this is a, not a very uh, correct comparison. When we take for high strength concrete the same reinforcement, and it's the same reinforcement as in version 2004, then we will have the blue line, and the green line is when the reinforcement is equal to the optimum reinforcement. The red one is the reference 2004. And then you see the difference between the two. The blue line comes a little bit down, comes a little bit closer to the reference value. So, um, when you compare it as a mean uh, uh, in of the or a mean value, you, you can say that there is a six percent less capacity if you take a different uh, 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 longitudinal reinforcement. And this graph is made for a, a slab of 250 millimeters depth, and the lower is 32 millimeters. You can also look at the influence of the use of the lower uh, when it's 32 millimeters or 16 millimeters. When you apply it to a slab with 250 millimeters uh, depth and you look at the punching resistance of concrete and the concrete quality, then you have different lines. We compare it with uh, uh, version uh, 2004, the red one. And then we calculate the different uh, 
the shear force capacity for the light green one is for a D lower 16. The other one is for a D lower equals to 20. And the dark green one is for D lower equal 32. So now you can easily see the influence of the concrete capacity, punching resistance of concrete uh, with respect to the uh, D lower. So there is a difference and you should be careful by using or by uh, using D lower equals to D max. So I, um, because of this, I recommend to use 16 millimeters as D lower and not make it equal to D max on the condition that D max of course is bigger than 16 millimeters. 